Hi everyone, it's me, Tim. Today I want to talk about using mechanics for storytelling. And this is an answer to a question by Benjamin Nunk 11 Can you talk about game gameplay mechanics as storytelling devices? By that I mean where a gameplay mechanic is directly reinforcing a character's connection with the setting or the story. So, uh, I, Benjamin, I love this question. It's the main reason I like to do mechanics after deciding the setting and story because I think mechanics should support those. Did a video about people who do mechanics first. You can totally do that. And then of course you make a setting and a story that, that supports your mechanics. I go the other way. Um, you might consider this video, I did another video called um, Gameplay's Influence on Story. So you might wanna watch that one too. I'll link it below. You can consider this a companion video. So I'm even wearing the same shirt. Um, as far as using mechanics, to support storytelling. This is something I've always wanted to do. It it just makes sense. I mean, every tabletop game I've ever played, the mechanics exist there so that the, the DM can make up certain stories. You know, it, they know your spells exist. So that's why there are NPC wizards and, you know, there are dragons. It's like, you know, these things exist and you use them in your story. So I've always wanted to do this in all of my games where I was, you know, responsible for creating a lot of it but I didn't always do it to the same extent. And some games didn't do it as much as I wanted. So let me walk through a few of them where I did it a bit, and then I'll talk about the one I think did it the best. So Fallout, OG, it did radiation mechanics. And one thing that radiation mechanics in that game were intended to support was that, hey, radiation is bad, it's deadly, and it's everywhere. And the world is messed up because of it. That's why places like the Glow were deadly. They were supposed to be deadly. And you were warned about it. In fact, when the Brotherhood sends you there, they don't expect you to come back. Because everybody who goes there dies. And when you go there, when you arrive at that giant hole in the ground, what do you see? A dead body. So the Glow was supposed to be deadly. Radiation was supposed to hurt you. Was supposed to, res you know, and supposed to be that silent killer. So sometimes you got radiation and then you started doing fast travel and fell over dead. Yes, that's what it's supposed to be like. Could we have made the UI give feedback better? Yes, and we should have. But the point is, radiation is supposed to be bad and deadly and something you're always worried about because it's part of Fallout setting. Um, when I did Temple of Elemental Evil, and that was based on D&D 3.5, one thing I added on top of all those rules was party alignment, which, which meant because you were making a whole party of characters that you controlled, I didn't want you to do things like, here's a paladin and an assassin, or here's a lawful good monk with a chaotic evil bard. I wanted it to make sense. Your party should make sense. And I added party alignment, meaning you had to pick an alignment and everyone in the party had to be one step away from it. So you either were up in the corner or you were one side plus neutral, or you know, one side plus neutral, or you were neutral and then you could be all the neutral ones, neutral evil, lawful neutral, neutral good, uh, chaotic neutral. It basically meant, meant the party made sense and it, it used alignment as sort of a mechanic to justify the story that was going to unfold with this particular party. And of course, I don't need to mention that Bloodlines, and I'm pretty sure, I mean, this is from the, the, the game itself, the tabletop game, but Bloodlines constantly reminded you that you were a vampire because you needed to feed and that affected your humanity. But you needed to do it. I mean, this was something that the game reinforced. I love games that do this. Of all my games, I think the one that did it the best was Arcanum. So Arcanum was all about the antagonistic tension between magic and tech. It was everywhere. It was in the setting. It was in the story we were telling. It was in the mechanics. You know, whole groups fought, tech groups versus magic groups. This fight had gone on a long time. There had been a previous war on it, and tech was winning until they didn't. Um, and it was happening again. This was sort of considered to be like Arcanum's perennial, you know, um, battle. It was magic versus tech. It was built in. It was baked into the setting, and it was baked into the story. So we wanted it baked into the mechanics. So that's why there was the magic tech meter. And every time you bought a spell or a particular skill, that magic tech meter moved. And then that magic tech meter affected every time you used a magic spell or a tech skill because that's what it was there for. And whether you used a magic item or a tech item, 
it was there to remind you that's what this world is about. So the player was had this constantly coming at him through the gameplay mechanics. And I think this is a good thing. And I think better games do this. If you don't do this, then you're, you run the risk of your game causing something called ludonarrative dissonance. Clint Hawking, I think he invented this term, but he was certainly the first one to use it. He described Bioshock that way. Now, I love Bioshock, but he's not wrong that the narrative talks about how the player should be selfless, but then everything about the mechanics forces you to be selfish. Um, you want to kill the little sisters because they have something you want. You want to choose certain people to um, promote because it's good for you. So some people can view that as there's a tension between selflessness and selfishness, and maybe that's the whole point of the game. But it does it in a way that the story says entirely one thing, and the game, game mechanics, the gameplay mechanics are saying another, where I think a better way to do it is the world shows both. The story shows both. And the mechanics constantly reinforce that tension. That you have decisions to make when you're making your character or when you're acting. And those affect the world. So it's really bad if the story and setting shows slash tells one thing. And then the gameplay t is telling you something different. And the reason you want to avoid this ludonarrative dissonance is it will make some players dislike your game. Even if they don't know exactly why. Um, and that's something that's a really bad thing to happen to you as a game designer where you're putting something in the game that will hit the player sometimes on a subconscious level some players are conscious of it and go oh i hate this the the game the narrative just told me one thing but the mechanics are telling me another others just make it it, it makes the game makes them feel off um, this can happen if you have a ui with a lot of friction points on it and then people get frustrated at the game and they're even thinking maybe you have bad mechanics or I hate this game, but really what it is is the the controls or the responses or the feedback you get in the user, user interface for some part of the UX is causing friction and it just bothers the player. Um, some people have told me, I, and I have to take their word on it, that some games from their color palette alone can turn off the player. And sometimes the players realize it. They're like, I find this color palette horrible. But others, they don't realize it. They just play the game, don't like it. And then later on blame things like, well, it had a story I didn't get into or I didn't like the mechanics when really it was the color palette was making them feel grossed out or nauseous the whole time. So what am I trying to say? I think that game mechanics are a huge way of supporting the story you're trying to tell and the setting you're trying to sell it, tell it in. I don't think enough games do this. I think some of my games didn't do this enough, but I always tried to do it. And I think it's a really good way for you to approach doing your mechanics. So I hope Benjamin Nock 11 that this answers your question.